this is a prophetic word that has been a long time in coming and a sense I don't know how many other videos I will do or anything but I will tell you this if you just some want somebody on my Facebook um, which is Yahweh the mighty one um, stirred me up from other prophetic words I've given and they don't know that but it stirred me up I want to tell you something I have seen and I, I realize this some people don't like even when somebody says that but look at the cost that it costs me to say that is is very very costly but I'm gonna tell you something and I say if and you can use that word because you know God says if my people and then he says he'll change and he'll heal but if not then he won't I'm gonna tell you something Trump has his term to do if he's not ousted by the radical left I think that he first place he's not a supernatural leader he's just a man and he's very good at what he's doing and the Lord did place him there to give us a time as I've shared in my other videos having said that reality is people I'm gonna say something very carefully what does the majority of the church believe about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says in the end time that there's gonna be a great apostasy and a great falling away but what does the majority when Jesus said that the way is narrow and there's a few that's gonna find it what does the majority of the church believe about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ they believe that the Lord is going to come in the daylight. And you, you, what do you mean? Well, in symbolism, they believe he's going to come at a, a good time. But the Bible says that the five, the ten uh, virgins, the five wise and the five foolish, the foolish didn't have oil in their lamps and their, their wicks were not uh, cut and ready. You only use a lamp at nighttime. The Lord Jesus Christ is not going to come when it's going to be sunshine. That's when we go out and we enjoy our life. And that's where we partake of the, the joys of life. We walk in a park with our family. We go to the beach. Um, it's a, we say, it's what a beautiful day it is today. And we can, we can work and we can do things in the day. We, we really, and, and especially in those cultures, you couldn't do anything at night. But you can work and you can do things in the day, but when the night comes, you can't work. And so, look, think, and, and uh, Jesus said that. He said, you, you know, listen, the, the, now is the time, he said, to work. Because when, when he says, because that you, there's going to be a time where you won't be able to work, and he talks about that in scripture and he says to do your work while it is day because when the night comes you're not going to be able to do it go look it up it's in the Bible um, now what I'm talking about I'm showing this in the proverb sense the Bible says that the that the wise virgins knew I know that the Lord is not coming in the day he is not he's coming in the night season when the prospects are not good and when you cannot work that is you cannot do the work of the Lord as you could before because the night keeps you from being able to do the same type of work as in the day and so the season that's coming upon the United States is one of darkness I've seen this and the visions that the Lord gave to me and you can you can hear or you cannot but men like David Wilkerson uh, many other men of God have had similar visions to me not exactly like mine but I've had visions of the judgment of the United States of America open visions not dreams in first place Solomon said that dreams can be from a lot of activity I have visions people have uh, they think oh he's had a dream no no I'm talking awake awake okay 
that I have supernatural experiences. And I don't want to get into all this. I just want to say this. Look at the five foolish virgins. If they had known that it was at the night, they would have been prepared. But they weren't ready. And the reality is they were not aware of the season. Second thing is, Jesus said you can't do work in the night. I think it's in the Gospel of John. And what, are we, that, what does that represent? It, it represents persecution. America and other countries are going to suffer major persecution. I'm going to turn you on to something. Go and begin to watch the program called True News with Rich Wiles. He is, had an incredible vision and visitation of the Lord about the coming of the Lord and the timing of that coming. And you will see that he agrees with what I'm saying. And please watch his program. I'm turning you on to that. Rich Wiles True News. And, uh, and watch his program. You'll see that what I am saying and he is saying and many other mighty men of God. Uh, people turn me on to Norval Johnson. He's saying the same thing. Sun, Sundar, I think he is an Indian man. Somebody turned me on about this uh, gentleman He's saying the same thing. The, the, and, and what is it? That we are going to go into a dark hour. I have seen persecution of Christians in America. I have seen that. Um, I have seen difficult times coming. If the liberal right, li liberal, <laughs> the liberal left gets in there, the radical left gets in, and I believe they will in time, you are going to see persecution like you have never seen in the United States of America. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In your lifetime, if you're older like me, you have seen what? You have seen traditional marriage, then you've seen untraditional marriage, then you've seen gender just confusion with now in California, we, we don't, you know, we don't have uh, men's rooms and women's rooms uh, in locations now, and it's the law in California so we're talking Sodom and Gomorrah as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It doesn't say just as it was in the days of Noah. Read your Bible. It says as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. We are talking stuff. When people ask me about Pacific words, let me tell you something. And this is a word of the Lord. There's no way to prophesy what's coming. You say, why? Because this is what we've got. I've got to say. Economic collapse famine, droughts, um, diseases that have never been heard of or ever seen, EMP attacks, terrorism, um, deep state control of the government here, uh, trying to control the government, the loss of the liberty of speech. Um, the word police, not, you're not allowed to say you love Jesus Christ or share the gospel. Converting to people to Christianity against the law. Um, not allowed to preach about sin and repentance. All of these things are coming. I seen it, uh, the Lord gave me a vision of an apostated church. And he, in this apostated church, he gave me this vision and he showed me that um, there will be a false Christianity in the United States of America. We're talking about the blood of Jesus and repentance and hell. Will we be completely considered evil? And those who believe that, we will be villainized. We who preach righteousness will be considered wicked. We will literally be, and they will believe we are wicked. We who preach righteousness. This is coming to the United States. I do not mean to be a bummer to you. I know you've been taught certain things and you've been taught them over and over again, but you have been spoon fed and you are seeing through the lenses and the filters of theologian that, it's, uh, and listen, that was not taught in the early church. The early, and what I mean by early Christianity is the early Christianity did not preach what people are preaching about the coming of the Lord. 
we are going to go through some major persecution and tribulation before the Lord comes for the purification of the church and the sifting of the wheat, of the wheat and the tares and the goats and the sheep. The United States of America is going to go into great, its greatness as a nation is going to leave. The glory of God has already lifted off of the nation as a whole. Ichabog has been written upon America. The glory of the Lord has lifted. God has taken his hand of protection off of America and permitted us to be attacked by foreign countries. The blood of the children rise up and cry out from the earth who've been aborted. God is angry with those who would try to do evil against our children. I don't even want to say the corruption that is in this country. It is terrible. Understand, just because God delays in judgment does not mean he has counseled his judgment. It's not counseled. Judgment will come. America will be shaken politically, economically, socially, spiritually, religiously, in every way. The redefining of the family will completely change. These things are happening as I speak. How can a man prophesy when everything that you can imagine will happen that is evil? And as, as this happens, the light of God's gospel through those who are his true servants who abhor evil and cleave to righteousness. Now understand something. Sinless perfection is an unbiblical teaching. If we walk in love and we walk in light and we confess our sins, we are in the light. If we practice sin, then we are the servant of sin and we are not the servant of God. But even a righteous man falls seven times and he rises again. And John says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and we are lying and the truth is not in us. He's saying you are deceived, you are delusional, your pride has completely deceived you to think that you can live in this world and be sinless. You cannot. But there is a far cry between being sinless and being a person of wickedness. Righteous people practice righteousness. The Spirit of God directs those who are born again to a hunger and thirst for holiness. They pursue it with all of their mind, heart, soul, and strength. Jesus said, those who, th those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be filled. God will increase us and we will change more and more into the image of Christ. But Paul says, what did he say? Philippians 1, 6. He who begun a good work in you will finish it to the day of Jesus Christ. If you think there's anybody on earth who the work is finished in, that's unbiblical. In Romans 9, 28, it says that the Lord will cut the work short in righteousness because the Lord's going to do a quick work in the earth. We don't need imputed righteousness if we are completely faultless. It's illogical. Okay? We do need God's righteousness because we fall short. John 1, I think it's verse 9, it says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we'll have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. That Greek word means a, a continual cleansing. While we're walking in the light, we're being cleansed from sin. The three things that are there in chapter 1 of, of John 1 shows what a Christian is to do. To walk in love. We who try to walk in love will be persecuted many times by people thinking they are doing righteous. When we simply are light and because of light we expose things and cause people to be uncomfortable. We must accept that and love people. John 1 explains what a mature Christian is. We must walk in love. Two, we must walk in light. We must practice righteousness. Three, he says, if we, can, if we sin, we have an advocate. Jesus Christ it says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. We must live a life of repentance, walking in the light, and love. These are the three keys to the maturity of a Christian. 
The Bible says the righteous are like the sun that shines brighter and brighter until that perfect day. It has not come yet. The Bible says that in Hebrews that God, that we dwell in the heavenly places, it talks about in Hebrews, with perfect men uh, or just men made perfect in their spirits. We can be made perfect in our spirits in this life. And that is if we follow God and fear the Lord, we are. I know by the grace of God as I speak, I have a witness in my spirit that I am a perfect man. My, in my spirit, I am a perfect man. I fear God and I chew evil. I love the Lord. I have no place in my heart towards bitterness to anyone on earth. I practice righteousness and when I stumble, I confess my sins. That makes me a righteous man. When Jesus said, be perfect, he was talking of the perfection of maturity. As we walk, as God is love, we are love in the earth. And as God is light, we are light in the earth. And we do this by continuing in a fellowship that is unbroken through prayer, meditation, fasting, and separation. As we do this, we are ready for the things that are to come. The carnal church will spread in its heresy and will become the enemy of the true church. They will villainize and attack us. The government will seek to take our children from us. This is going to happen. Praise God, my children are grown up. But the government is going to try to take your children from you. When you say, no, you are a boy, not a girl. You are a girl, you are not a boy. Um, homosexuality is a sin. These things will become completely illegal and your children will be taken from you. Homeschool will be stopped and the government will enforce your children to go to school so they can brainwash them and teach them that whatever you feel is good and you may be a girl stuck in a boy's body or a boy stuck in a girl's body and it doesn't matter. In fact, even even bestiality in time will be pr promoted in the United States. These are radical things that I'm saying, but I'm telling you, these things are all going to happen. I'm sorry to say this, you will lose your 5013 statuses. You will have to go and, and stop meeting in big buildings. You'll have to go underground in the United States and meet as I've seen in visions. You'll have to go underground and meet out of the fear of terrorism and persecution. And, and one, one thing that the Lord showed me that I saw was Christians meeting and they were, I was smuggled into a Christian meeting and they were asked, they were afraid of terrorism in the meeting and they were afraid of the government. This is coming to the United States. If you think what I'm saying is true, get this message out get it out. Don't leave this message by itself. I don't know what else to say. I feel these things with such urgency to say this stuff. I hope that you awake from your sleep and that Christ will give you light. Blow the trumpet. Get ready. Not for an immediate rapture, but get ready for what is coming to the earth that is to test and to try everyone that's upon the face of the earth. And I'm going to close at that point. And I will see you if I'm not here. I just want to let you know something. 2019, 2018, 2020, we're still here. We're not gone. 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024. We're going to be here. I saw from heaven the, 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 the wars and the violence upon the earth as an angel told me to look down from the heavenly realm. I saw things upon the earth that were incredible of great, I don't know how to explain it, that is coming. My message will not be received by people. People will hate me for what I'm saying, but I, will, I have said it and must continue to declare it. I have no control of, of, of what I have seen, 
when I have been convicted of my sin, as Daniel says in the book of Daniel, says, I, Daniel, was confessing my sins, and then I had this vision. As I have sought to live a contrite and repentant life, even though I'm an imperfect man, in my, in, but in my spirit I'm perfect. As I seek to humble myself and seek the Lord, I have seen these things. I don't know what else to say. I just hope that people will listen. What does it matter? It matters that you get prepared. Pastor John.